This video is brought to you by Cooler Master, featuring the Sidon 240mm all-in-one CPU water cooling system. Check it out at www.coolermaster-usa.com. Welcome to my unboxing of Intel's fourth generation core series processor, codename Haswell. And the reason for that is if you were to ask me, Linus, can I has? I would say, well, you better make sure you have a new motherboard because this is an all new chip on an all new socket. LGA 1150 is now the socket for this and it's a new chipset. So we're using the Z87 chipset as opposed to the Z77 chipset that was the most current one on LGA 1155. So you're still gonna have those same enthusiast features. Overclocking is supported, best on K-series SKUs, of course. You've also got support for uh, smart response technology, which is using SSD caching to accelerate your boot drive as long as everything's plugged into the chipset. In fact, the Z87 supports six SATA 3 ports natively, as opposed to just two on Z77. And of course, things like uh, LucidLogic's Virtue MVP, so that you can use the onboard graphics core on your CPU to do things like video transcoding and use the CPU for the things that it's best at. So it's very similar to the previous generation platform, but more newer and more better. You know, more USB 3, more SATA 3, all of that good kind of stuff. Now this is Intel's second processor that uses a 22 nanometer manufacturing process. The first was Ivy Bridge, which was a die shrunk version of Sandy Bridge. So Intel's TikTok strategy for releasing CPUs means they will change the architecture, then they'll shrink it then they'll change the architecture, then they'll shrink it. So this is a new architecture. That means that we should see the biggest performance improvements usually with an architecture change versus with a process shrink. However, this generation is going to be a little bit weird because the last one, Ivy Bridge, we got a 10% IPC performance improvement versus Sandy Bridge in spite of the fact that it was just a die shrink, quote unquote. So, Based on that we're getting about another 10% with Haswell, that might not seem like a generational gap because it's the first time that the architecture has changed since Sandy Bridge in theory, but because it's been more of a gradual progression of changes, it's still pretty significant. So it's about a 20% IPC improvement over the two generations now ago Sandy Bridge processors. So which CPUs should you care about? The answer is actually, well, it depends. If you're an enthusiast and you want to overclock, you're going to want a K-series CPU. So the two K-series ones are the 4770K and the 4670K. So the 4770K is clocked a little bit higher. 3.5 gigahertz all the way turboing up to 3.9 versus 3.4 turboing to 3.8 for the 4670K, which is an i5. Also, the 4770K features hyperthreading due to its i7 heritage. However, there's more to Haswell than just overclockable, unlocked processors that perform really well. These are both quad cores. And that would be the lower power consumption part. So Haswell has dramatically improved power consumption due to some more advanced C states that allow the processor to turn itself way down to a very low power consumption state, but still remain functional. And with their beefed up onboard graphics offering up to three times the performance of the last generation Intel HD graphics, then these chips will be very interesting, particularly for entry-level gamers who aren't going to add a discrete graphics card to their system, but still want to be able to play some modern games, which I think is very, very cool. Particularly, think about this as well, with that lower power consumption and that better graphics performance, we're looking at a whole new world for things like ultrabooks and tablets. Haswell unboxing shot three, take three. We've got that same support for dual channel DDR3 memory, but we're also getting some new instruction sets, which over time, as software becomes optimized for them, could start to become a real advantage. And the way overclocking's changed is kind of interesting as well. So number one is that it now supports base clock straps, which means that you can actually change the base clock. So remember, the clock speed of your processor is determined by your multiplier and your base clock. So you can now change your base clock as opposed to just your multiplier using straps on your board. So you could go, okay, I want to have um, you know a nominal base clock of 125 now, and then I can make adjustments from there to my multiplier or even tweak it up and down a little bit. That's cool. That wasn't supported on Ivy Bridge because as soon as you started to change the base clock more than a little bit, it would throw other clocks on the motherboard such as your PCI Express clock completely out of whack and cause a no post situation. So that's neat. Another thing is they've integrated voltage regulation right on the CPU. So what that means, in theory, 
is that pretty much all the way from, you know, an ASUS channel level Z87A board, all the way up to something like uh, a Maxima 6 Extreme, you're going to have a pretty similar overclocking experience until you start to get into very exotic cooling methods and very, very high voltages, which is exciting because it means that from an affordability standpoint, it's going to be more than, it's, it's about more than just how much the CPU costs, which is going to be similar to last gen, but you might be able to get away with squeezing more performance out of a less expensive board, which personally I find exciting. Well, Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at Haswell, I'm going to probably call this a 4770K and 4670K unboxing because those are the ones I focus on. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And I guess I should open the box at some point, right? Why don't we do that? Here you go. You got a heat sink. Looks exactly like the Ivy Bridge one. It's got some thermal compound on the bottom, 4-pin PWM fan. You're going to have a manual and a three-year warranty documentation in yours, and you're going to have a CPU itself. Yours won't look quite like this, though, because mine says Intel Confidential, and yours will say 4670K in this case, or 4770K on the top. Don't forget to subscribe.